2023 was an amazing year for games. So many new games released that all seem fantastic in their own ways, but not all can be the best. We're here to talk about the games I think stood tall against the others, stood out amongst the crowd, and kicked the most ass this year. These are my personal top 5 games of 2023, only going off of the games I've played this year, so if your favorite game isn't in my top, it might be one I didn't get to play. So sound off in the comments on which one was one of your favorites, and if you agree or disagree with any of my top picks. Spoiler warning, I'm going to be leaving a few seconds for each game's title and won't be going too deep into spoilers for each one, but figured give it a heads up just in case. And if you want to be my personal number one for this year, all it takes is smashing that subscribe button. Now let's get into it, starting with number five. Take our hourglass, hero, and enter Death's Realm once again. Coming in at number five is Death Must Die. This was one of those games that unexpectedly hit me out of nowhere due to a friend recommending it to me, and I just immediately lost a few hours playing it. The gameplay is fun, the roguelike elements are done well, collecting loot is always a good thing for me. Honestly, it's probably bad at this point, but loot is so cool. And being able to mix and match abilities with certain perks, depending on what you find, leads to multiple different ways to play the game. You have your choices of characters, each with different abilities and personalities, and honestly, each one is just dorky, I love them. But I prefer to play as the magic user, Maris. Nothing beats just setting everything on fire. If you're a fan of Vampire Survivors, then you're bound to enjoy this one. If you're looking for a fun game to hop into for some quick gameplay, or a game to focus on for an entire day, this game's definitely for you. Just expect to die. A lot. The company is high. high. At the end of a long day at work, don't you want to go make money for another corporation or die trying? That's my favorite way to relax! And that is why the sleeper hit of the year Lethal Company takes spot number 4 for me. This game has easily been some of the most fun I've had playing with friends and it's a blast to watch. I haven't been able to play it too much and I'm uh, not really that good at it yet. Oh, it's very steamy. But it's fun, and definitely one of those games where you can notice your progress over time. The dev team consistently keeps it updated and fresh, so I'm looking forward to seeing where the game goes in the future. The game is definitely an example of that a fancy art style and a AAA studio aren't needed to make a good game. Just devs who are passionate and all about fun. Now go out there and hit your quota. Space Jeff Bezos needs to buy another space yacht. We made a choice, go fight against your I can honestly say I would have never expected to put a gacha game in any top listing of mine, but Honkai Star Rail hooked me in and earned spot number 3. Of course, the first thing that got me into the game are the graphics. The anime style has really been mastered by Hoi over the years. Each character design feels unique and lines up with their personalities well. At the end of the day, yes, this is a gacha game, and it's made for mobile, but it doesn't feel as in your face as you'd think it would. I definitely prefer playing on PC, but being able to boot up on my phone and farm some stuff with auto battles is definitely a welcome change. I've always been a fan of sci-fi as well, so it's cool to see a game like this really embrace sci-fi travel and world building as much as it has. The plot starts off short and sweet, giving you enough of a taste of the gameplay and some intrigue. Turn-based combat is always iffy in games nowadays. Either it's done well, or it's not. Honkai Star Rail is turn-based combat that feels fluid, simple enough for anyone to get the hang of, but also difficult at times. The story is what truly locked me in though. Yes, the gameplay, art style, and characters are great, but the story ties it all together with a neat little bow. The pinnacle moment of the game for me is easy as the Kokolia boss fight. The build up to her being the main villain was great, having your main character go down and then have a power up moment, just to go into the final battle with Kokolia's theme wildfire playing. Just a chef kiss moment for me. My personal experience was also more emotionally charged because I had Branya on my team, so having her have to fight her mother to save her world just hits you right in the feels no matter how you look at it. This honestly felt like an endgame boss fight, but it's only scratching the surface of this game. I'm gonna actually take a break from editing and go listen to Wildfire like right now actually. Most importantly though, March 7th is a complete cinnamon roll who could do no wrong in ever and could brighten anyone's day. Where's everyone going? Bingo? I know, I know. But Jack, Resident Evil 4 is a remake. It shouldn't be a top contender. But listen, listen. Leon S. Kennedy is one of the most handsome game characters of all time. He gets a pass for this one. And that is why Resident Evil 4 Remake comes in at number two for me. In all seriousness, the RE4 Remake was just done really, really well. It took everything from the original game and made it just better. The voice acting, the gameplay, all just really, really fun. Plus, I didn't want to constantly throw Ashley in the trash this time. No way, Leon. Way. 
The original Resident Evil 4 will always hold a special place in my heart, and it's still an amazing game, but the remake has impressed me much more than I expected. It's a bit tough to talk about the good parts here, because let's face it, a lot of them are just the same from the original game. But when ranking my favorite games of the year, my main factor for ranking them is fun. Did I have fun playing this game? Did it keep my attention with good gameplay, story, and action? Resident Evil 4 absolutely excelled at doing all of these. It's one of the two games this year I actually want to go back and complete all the trophies for. And besides, there's a badass character named Jack in it. Of course I'd like the game. And, you know, Leon's amazing use of dorky jokes just fits my style of humor. Yeah. Nighty night. Nights. It's time to find out who we are. Once and for all. I don't hide the fact that I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan, but I can honestly say in the past 23 years since Final Fantasy X, I would have never considered putting any new Final Fantasy title on any top 10 list of mine, let alone a top 5. Final Fantasy XVI changed that and cemented its place as my number one game of 2023. From the moment I played the demo of the first part of the game to the end credits that had me in tears, I knew this game was special. I could honestly spend hours talking about this game and going into detail, and hopefully one day I'll have the time to make a video on it, so just want to briefly go over some reasons why it's my number one. First off, gameplay. From the start, the combat in the game felt fluid and fun for me. I love to fight in games and I love a challenge. While this combat isn't the most challenging ever, it has a good amount of options to mix and match abilities to pull off some sick combos. The hunts were a blast too, I just really wish they had some more in there. Next, the story and characters. The story locked me in and got me invested. Won't go through too many spoilers here, but just the whole idea of finding out your true self, protecting friends and family, and doing what's right when the world's against you, just all story beats that I love. I'm a sucker for a good-hearted main character too, and Clive is one of the best protagonists in a game in a long time. Accompanied by the absolutely amazing voice work of Ben Starr, Clive brings a badass hero to the table that is not afraid to cry and show emotions. That's what makes us strong, being able to accept ourselves and our emotions and live with them. And that's why Clive is such a wonderful character. I do wish we had more time with some of the other characters, and the side quests did expand upon them a lot, but there's only so much you could fit into a game without it feeling bloated. And honestly, some of the side quests already did feel bloated. You could definitely feel the MMO inspiration from Yoshi P and Creative Business Unit 3 from their work on Final Fantasy XIV, in wanting to just have side quests there to keep the player busy. And to top it off, the amazing soundtrack from Masayoshi Shisoken. Find the Flame has been on the top of any of my playlists since it released. It's such a hype and emotional song. Like I said earlier, I could go on for hours talking about this game. And if you want to hear a full review from me, let me know in the comments below. But for now, I'll leave you with some words of wisdom. Accept yourselves and accept who you are. Love yourselves and those around you. And you too can be a badass like Clive. There you have it, my top 5 games of 2023. Agree with any of my picks? Like the video and let me know in the comments. Disagree with my picks? Let me know in the comments and share the video with your enemies. Either way, thank you for watching, and I would love to hear what your personal favorite games of the year were. I honestly wish I had more time to play others. I really think that Baldur's Gate 3 and Armored Core 6 would have a high chance of being in my top 5 if I got a chance to play them, but maybe I can get to them sometime this year. If you enjoyed the video, consider hitting that subscribe button and checking out some of my other videos, like this high quality one recommended by the glorious YouTube algorithm. I'm sure they picked a good one. Until next time, keep being kind to each other and live life with the mindset that every day is a gift. Happy New Year, everyone.